the Spurs are on a three-game winning streak. This is not a drill, people. Three games. Run it back. Starts now. Run it up. The run it back. Yeah. Run it up. The run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Yeah. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Smiling face. Look at Eddie smiling. It's beaming. I can feel it through the screen. We are run it back. Stadium Insider, Sham Sharania, Chandler Parsons, Eddie G there on the end. And we we were wanted to start the show with the Spurs, but we're going to make you guys wait for the dessert just a little bit longer. So instead, we'll start with the Portland Trailblazers and one Dame Lillard. I mean, dude, I love when Damian Lillard does what he does. And last night he did 11 threes in three quarters. And then the world was in an uproar because then they didn't see him again. So here's the big question. Chandler, do you agree? Because Chauncey Billups did say he was on a heater. It was fun to watch. But then he sat him the entire fourth quarter. What do you think about that? Uh, it's, it's the right move, unfortunately. And, you know, Dame, for whatever reason, he doesn't get talked about like one of these great shooters of all time. And he is right up there, especially when we're talking about range. And when he gets going, man, it is, it's fun to watch, but he's been out. He has been I mean, kind of riddled with injuries this year. So the smart play is, is to sit him here. Obviously we all love to see records and we want to see him chase it, but the game was well out of reach. He's been battling injuries pretty much all year long. Like He's not guaranteed to go back in and make, you know, three or four more or whatever it is. Anyways, th- this was definitely the, the right move. It just, it's, it's no fun as a fan sitting there watching <laughs> it. You want to see history broke there, but man, when he gets going and he's pulling from that deep, it is, it is something special to watch. 11 threes, Eddie. Were you disappointed too? Of course, I, I hate when they when they do this with guys. Uh, I think Clay had like fifty nine and three quarters a few years back. <laughs> I couldn't believe Steve Kerr didn't let him go chase eighty. Uh, I remember Kobe had sixty three, did a mad sixty two. Same thing. I, I couldn't believe that Phil didn't let him go out there and get eighty one, and then he did it a month later because he's Kobe. But I hate it. Like I'm all for the integrity of the game, but if I if I got a record out there that's to be had, like let me go, let me go get my money. But I, I get it. Chauncey's an old pro, and, and he's gonna respect the game, and, and they won, so it's fine. But as a fan, I'm like, yeah, let me see 17 threes. Let's see if you can do it, 2K Dame. <laughs> From a fan Ch- perspective, guys, I, yeah. I, I would have loved to see it, but I'm gonna go with what Dame said last night. He's like, I would rather get it in the flow of the game. You know, we're, we're trying to go win a game. It's tough to have him just go out there and jack jack up threes. But like, this is a big time. It was a big time game last night for Damian Lillard, and he's also set to become the Portland Trailblazers' leading franchise scorer of all time, passing Clyde Drexler here in the next week or so. So. A couple big milestones potentially that would have been had for Dame Lillard. So it would have been cool to see him get the three-point record as well because I definitely think if he played that fourth quarter, he probably would have gotten it. But also, you got to remember here, imagine this is a whole different storyline if he goes back in and gets hurt or if he, you know, God forbid something happens to him. So as boring and as, you know, you know, people disagree with it. It's you have to do this. He's your franchise player. Your team is surprisingly playing well this year. They're right in the mix of things. It sucks, but you, you have, I agree a hundred percent with this. You gotta, it just sucks that this wasn't a close game. And like he said, he couldn't get it within the flow of the game. If this was a close game. No doubt in my mind, he's, he's breaking the record. I said, damned if you do, damned if you don't, because you're right. If Chauncey had put him back in and he had gotten hurt, that then that's that's all we're talking about today. Why is he in the game? But right. I do wonder, and, and Chandler, this to you especially, um, if you're Dame, are you are you angry? Are you pushing back? Are you fighting? Or are you just sort of accepting what it is? No, it's you accept it. This happens in all the sports. This happened with Clayton Kershaw this year. We had a perfect game going, like the seventh, and they took him out. Like this is, it's the era of of load management, you, and especially with a guy like him who's getting up there in age, who's been hurt, like we just discussed. You're not angry at all. You definitely get it, and I know Chauncey has a relationship with him where you know this was a mutual decision. I'm sure if Dame really wanted to go back in the game, Chauncey would have let him go back in the game, but. It was a blowout. There's zero reason for him to go back in there. I'm sorry. There'll there'll be other opportunities for him to break this record. And and let's be honest. These trailblazers uh, fly here to San Antonio to face a very hot, streaking (laughs) 
San Antonio Spurs team tomorrow. I don't know why the laughter is happening. That was not a joke. <laughs> Eddie, I'm looking right at you every single time. Uh, picking up, by the way, Eddie, I do want to transition over to the Nets for a second because I don't know. It seems like the air got clear, the drama died down, and they're doing exactly what everyone wanted the Nets to do. Eight and two in their last 10. A nice rested team beating the Wizards last night. So other than maybe the obvious... What has changed? What is it? Is it the coaching? What is so different about this team right now that they're in the flow? Yeah, what's what's three straight wins when you have four straight wins, Michelle? Like, <laughs> let's let's talk about the real hot team in the league. Um, it, look, Jock Vaughn has instilled something in this team for sure, and, and you can see it just in the energy and the effort they play with. They lead the league in blocks for a pretty small and slight team. That's astounding. Uh, their defense has been night and day with Jock as opposed to Steve Nash before him. I think one of the things you can see kind of like in the most simplest way is he's holding guys accountable. Kyrie mentioned it yesterday, a great quote about, you know, hey, if you don't play hard, he's not going to play you. If you look at their rotation, it, it, a bunch of guys have been in and out the rotation. He brought Ben Simmons off the bench. He He's cut Kyrie's minutes in certain games. He's done the same with Edmund Sumner where he would get a – DMP Cam Thomas, same thing. DMP uh, Nick Claxton will be quick to come out the game if he doesn't like his effort. He's quick to call a timeout if those guys are breaking a play, and he's just there's just a level of accountability there that that wasn't there before. Uh, did they get a little bit of injury luck as well? Sure, but they also didn't have Kyrie for eight games. They also missed Ben Simmons for X amount of games. They, you know, Royce O'Neal shut it down for a couple of days just now. Uh, they obviously had the, the the game where they sit everybody and they still won. They had a historic <laughs> amount of offensive rebounds, 39 offensive rebounds. I mean, what, what else on the, on the court spells effort besides offense rebounds. So, you know, he's lit a fire under them. I know it's a little cliche, but you can see it, especially if you remember how they look in October and early November. Yeah, I, and I think the, the same thing. Sometimes in the league, all you need is just a change. No matter whose fault, what's the situation, uh, guys weren't happy, they weren't winning, they weren't exceeding expectations, and, and a change is needed. Whether Jacques Vaughn's doing something drastically different, who knows? It does seem like they're playing harder. It seems like their defense is much improved. I can't sit here and say that their offense is, you know, different they kind of just take turns still and they're just they're healthy and they're playing good but their offense is kind of the same they just have kevin durant and kyrie irving that are capable of carrying the load there but yeah, some there's been so many situations where just a simple coaching change a simple you know move rust to the bench all you need is kind of that move uh, and as a coach, as an organization that you, you got to have those, those, you know, those things happen for, to, to light a fire, like Eddie said, and it seems to be working w with them right now. Cause they're hitting the stride. And, uh, but again, we've didn't, been down this road with them before last night and looking at the wizards as Goodwin, Kisper, uh, uh, uh Badijo, however you say his name, they're in the starting lineup. Like that, that's, I wouldn't really say this is a, a big win, but anytime you get a win, especially on a streak like this, it's great for all the, all the drama that's been surrounded with this team. I feel like that's, I hate, I, I don't want to jinx it, but I feel like it's in the past. So, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think they're kind of hitting their stride at the right point here. Shams. Yeah, and, 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 and when you look at this team, I think Eddie hit on a lot of it. The accountability, the in-game adjustments are, are no doubt major factors of this team. But when I talk to people on the Nets, the biggest thing right now with Jock Vaughn also is communication. His ability to actually get through to players, have really honest and frank conversations with guys, whether it's a Ben Simmons, a Kevin Durant, a Kyrie Irving. Uh, his, his connectivity to guys is something that was missing uh, really over the last couple of years in Brooklyn. And so that's – you have to give – Jock Vaughn, a lot of credit for that and what he's been able to instill. And just the energy and effort that these guys are playing with, it's, it's palpable. They are, this is a very easy part of the schedule. Uh, I think Kevin Durant referenced it last night. Like, this is a soft part. But listen, there were times last year and the year before where they just didn't take care of business against these, these you know, bottom-dwelling teams. They are now. Can I ask one quick question before we, before we move on? And Eddie, I, I, you're probably the best equipped to answer this one, but... Is it when you're a Nets fan or when you're in that area and you, and you follow this team, uh, does it feel like you're always sort of waiting for whatever the next drama, like when you're in a relationship and the other person screws up all the time and you're like waiting for the next one, does it feel like that or can you just enjoy it? I think there was a little bit of that to start the season for sure. I've talked to people around the team over the last few weeks and it was 
the the story, even going back into the summer with all the drama with Kevin, is like, let's see everybody on the floor. Let's see TJ Warren. Let's see Ben Simmons. Let's see Edmund Sumner. Let's see everybody. Now they have everybody now. And talking to people around the team, it's like, all right, look, now that we have everybody, look at how we're doing. Yeah, the schedule's a little easy. And yeah, we dropped the Celtics game. But, you, you know, we're, we're fourth in the, in the conference right now. Half a game out of three. Two big games next week. Celtics and Bu- uh, not Celtics, Warriors and Bucks at home before mm-hmm. Christmas. Uh, they're going to learn a lot about that team right now. But it seems to be all good in Brooklyn at the moment for sure. Ah, everything's peaceful. I enjoy that. Moment. Celtics, by the way, that loss doesn't look yeah. so bad right now. Um, okay, this is it. Everyone pick up your coffees. Enjoy your donut. It is time to enjoy the thrilling conclusion of last night's Spurs-Cavs game. Jones, six on the shot clock against Garland. Passing with the screen. Jones on the drive. No. Comes off to Cleveland. 13 seconds to go. No shot clock. Pick him up. They don't call timeout. Mitchell all the way back. Oh, mama. Mama to the corner. Garland, no. Rebound, Cleveland. Two seconds to go. A scramble on the floor. Spurs win! Spurs win! Oh my goodness! What a finish! Shout out Bill Land, Sean Elliott, and all I contributed to that entire thing was laughing because it was just chaos. Oh, but I mean, it was it was that was fun. Like that. Look, three in a row. You can say what you want. I know whatever tank, blah blah blah. But it changes the vibe in the building, and it certainly felt like that last night. But then I ask you guys, Chandler, is this more about what the Spurs have figured out, maybe, or is this something about the Cavs that we should be worried about? It's more about the Cavs because this is a team that we're talking about, you know, being a real contender in the East, being a, you know, that third best team after Boston and Milwaukee. And these are games that you got to win. This is a team that is obviously going through a rebuild, but this also gives the fans in San Antonio, this gives them hope. Their young guys are are playing well. That that was a huge block by Kelvin Johnson. Richardson had a great game. These guys are getting experience that they would never get in a normal situation that is going to be key for their development and uh, I think it says more obviously negative about the Cavs if they want to be a real contender this year they got to minimize these type of losses but this is huge for San Antonio this is huge for their young guys development their fans um I think they'd still prefer to lose these type of games like we always talk about but you know at the end of the day like the right now the Rockets are winning games the Magic are on a three game winning streak these teams are <laughs> going to it's hard to go oh and eight too there's going to be good wins for teams. There's going to be bad losses, but this is fun for San Antonio. No one wants to go there knowing your team's going to lose. And this is, this was a big win. It was exciting in the arena last night. Yeah. Shout, shout out to Keldon Johnson. The only spur looked like trying to win that game. He saved the game. Darius Garland. Like it could not have been set up better for DG to hit that three and go home with a nice win. But Look, like like Michelle said, it's fun. Even if you know your team is, you know, kind of bad, it's fun when you have a tight game late. When when you do something like this to win, listen to the arena. Like they're 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 amazed. They're having so much <laughs> energy. You're not expecting that from them. Also, I gotta give credit to the Iceman throwback jerseys that they're wearing. Uh, I, I'm full supportive of what they're doing with their unis this year. Uh, but Thank they're you. gonna need to start losing some of these games pretty soon for sure. Right, they're, they're in Houston are eight and eighteen now. Now, all right, good win, but now back to the plan. The, the Texas battle, the no one knew they wanted. <laughs> 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 no, you know what though? I, I people ask all the time. I think the number one question: What's Pop? What's Pop gonna do? When's Pop gonna retire? What is he having fun? Last night was one of those nights where um, I'm probably not a lot of people didn't get to see it, but he was coaching. Like I mean in the defensive stance, slamming the desk, just really coaching up the dudes. And they always look over to him. I don't know, Chandler. I feel like this was the big talk last night before the game, too, is sort of the psychology of a team. When you're on an 11-game losing streak, you walk into work and you just think, we have no shot, we're not going to win. Versus, all right, win a couple, and it completely changes everything. Your coach is still very much invested. He also happens to be one of the best of all time, in my opinion, the. What is that? What's the value in that as a young player, especially? 
I mean, it's huge for, especially you're setting an example. These young kids obviously know pop They know about his success. He's used to winning and he's not accustomed to the season that they're having this year. So, you know, who knows with his future with the team, but it, it, it shows a lot to these guys that, you know, we understand where we are. We understand that we're not a contender this year, but I'm still here. I'm still going to coach you. I'm still going to try and, you know, bring you along as fast as I can. Um, and, and it gives them kind of, you know, that courage to go out there and play hard like this. And, you know, no one wants, like I said, no one wants to go to the arena and go to practice and go to shoot around, put in all this work that they've done just to go out there and just lose on purpose. Like that's just not in their DNA. It's not what got these kids to the NBA. So the fact that pop is still so involved and is animated like that on the sidelines, it just shows that he's a pro's pro. And, and that's why he's probably the best coach of all time. And Shams, when can I expect you down here for a one-on-one -on -one with Keldon Johnson? Is that this week? Um, let me know. I will host I actually you. did a one-on-one -on -one with Keldon Johnson. I think, oh! I think it was last year or the year before that. But, like, he, the energy he's played with, his development, like, that contract is looking better and better with every passing day. One note on the Cavs, I think the one thing that when, when we look at this roster, they need a wing. Like, Chan, uh, Chandler Parsons in his prime type of wing player. Let's go. Um, they've tried out <laughs> Dean Wade, Lamar Stevens. Um, Karis Levert at different times, even though he's probably better suited on this team as a six man. So Chandler, you might have to call your guy JB and, uh, and, and mm. suit up. Yes. Let's, let's get it. Make it happen. That'd be fun to watch. Uh, look, the Celtics, by the way, don't look now. Something is going on. But the Clippers with a very nice, very convincing 113-93 win. How about Kawhi and PG with a combined 51 Okay, this is the Clippers team, and I don't want to get too excited because keeping them both on the floor seems almost impossible. But when they are both on the floor, Eddie, how dangerous are they really? I mean, their ceiling is world champion. They're, they're, they're that good in a league that is built to score from the wings. They have some of the best defensive wings in the league. They have some of the, the, the one of the best rosters of wings and versatility. Nick Batum, kind of unsung hero here been a monster for them defensively and and he he made things rough for Jason Tatum last night and Jalen Brown they're built to win that style of play that playoff style of, of basketball the problem for them in the west is there's there's one mon a monkey in that and wrench is in that style of play and that's Stephen Curry he's not a wing mm -hmm. and and nobody at this size can guard him and they're going to run into him eventually one way or the other uh, they also owe uh, Luca a little bit a little bit of slack as well but they're a dangerous, dangerous team, and now they're without Norman Powell, so they're still not even full strength. But for Kawhi mm -hmm. to go out there and shoot 10 of 12, score 25 points against those guys, which a week ago we said is the best team in the league, it just shows how effective he can be even in small doses as he rounds himself into shape and, and gets ready for the long run. Now, are they all going to shut it down in a week, and then we won't see them again until Valentine's Day? Maybe. I mean, Great it might question. not even a, be a bad idea, but – they, they show their potential when they need to, and that's a maybe the most dangerous team in the league. Yeah, watching this game last night, this was vintage Kawhi Leonard. He was getting to his spots. He was pulling up left, pulling up right, posting up. This was – he looked thin. He looked in shape. Uh, this was the Kawhi Leonard that was brought there to, you know, to be their best player. And this just shows you how good that they can be. Like we just said, Covington, Powell, they didn't play last night and they still just dominated the best team in the league um, with, with Paul George and Kawhi. This is the first time they both scored over 20 in a really long time. Uh, this just shows that they are a real contender. I'd love to see them build off this. I'd love to see them at full strength, but uh on the other side, this is the Celtics have been on the road. This is a two game losing streak. Uh, they got the Lakers tonight. Um, I feel like they've been on the road forever and it's not been an right. easy road trip, but this is something that, you know, they, they need to put an end to this right now. They need to bounce back, but th this just shows you how dangerous the Clippers are when they're fully loaded. It also shows you how tumultuous this league can sometimes be because one minute we're like, God, ah, call it a day Celtics for the win. But Shams, they have, they shown a few weaknesses that maybe if you are a Celtics fan, got your eyebrows raised a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you're, they're waiting on the return of Robert Williams, Al Horford, not in the lineup as well. So you're down a couple of bigs and you saw last night, the way that the Clippers played, uh, they were getting to their spots. Kawhi Leonard, PG were, were super aggressive. And I think for, for the Clippers side, you have to give a lot of credit to Ty Lue. He kept his team afloat. 
uh, when they were without both of those guys for pretty much most stretches of this season. And so that, to me, speaks identity and culture. And now th- the sky's the limit. They- this is a team that should have made it to the conference final, uh, definitely the NBA finals, after making it to the conference finals without, Ka- without Kawhi Leonard a couple seasons ago. So I think uh, this-, this team seems prime now. They just got to keep these guys on the floor. And I think for the Celtics, try to bounce back tonight and get Al Horford and, and Rob Williams in- back in your lineup, uh, possibly by the end of the weekend. I love a good time machine journey, and I love when somebody who's considered, quote, old uh, has a moment in the sun. And Blake Griffin mm. trying to recreate the Mozgov dunk, which gave me life for like four years. Do we love this or do we love this, Chandler? Oh, man, I, I love it so much. And I really am happy for Blake. He, he, he's he <laughs> been kind of up and down. Uh, he. He, he, he's playing very, very good for for Boston this year. He's filling in. He's starting for them now. He's doing all the little things. He's playing hard. He's only taking wide open threes. But yeah, th- this this last night, this could have really, really been special. But I, I love uh, the fact Rich. that he's even attempting things like that. Right? What this got into him? You know, We're got doing into it. We're doing a lot for a missed layup right now. I'm, I'm going to be that guy. I, I don't. You are that this guy. is like a really loud missed layup, and and that's cool. I'm I'm happy for Blake. He's he's found a, a place to have a decent role there while they wait for the big fellas to come back. A team where he has an opportunity to win a championship. Thought it was a little funny that the Nets gave him a, a tribute video when he came back to town <laughs> for two up and down seasons. But look, Blake is a legend. He he really is peaked at the start of internet basketball and and this is Uh, what he used to give us on a nightly basis i remember seeing blake in sacramento in like 2012 and it felt like a mega star was in the arena like every time there was a deflection it was like because you might just get to see blake dunk so i'm happy to see him still around doing stuff like this but i gotta hate a little bit like that's that's a badly missed layup that we're getting excited about. <laughs> we just want he greatness. He got fouled, man. Eddie. He got fouled. Yeah, Eddie. Why are you such a hey, hater? It's Christmas. I miss layups without getting fouled. So look, it's <laughs> I get it. Like they're not nearly as impressive as that, but he's also six ten and in the NBA. So I'm gonna it's I'm gonna the- hold him to a little bit higher standard than me. Just wanted the Mozgov element. We wanted it back in our lives. It was so good. We're taking a quick break. When we come back, Sham's going to tell us which which big name player might actually be dealt, and I don't know a lot of other stuff. That's when Run It Back returns. Welcome back to Run It Back, and it is what is it? December thirteenth. So we're getting we're getting there, Shams. Time for you to really start giving us some information. Boyan Bogdanovich, hearing some some murmurs. What is the latest with him? About a dozen teams have inquired, trying to see if they can try to get Boyan Bogdanovich. He's having a tremendous season, 21 points a game, almost 44% from three-point range. We just saw him put up 38 points against the Lakers on Sunday night. The Lakers have been the most aggressive team on Boyan Bogdanovich recently. I'm told they've discussed sending at least one protected first-round pick as well, salary like Patrick Beverly for Bogdanovich. But right now, the Pistons just seem reluctant to moving him. And I think that the preference for their GM, Troy Weaver, is to keep him as they try to move into next season and try to win. Um, but I think you're, you're going to see the Lakers try to get involved. They're, they're trying to get some shooting uh, with Anthony Davis. LeBron James having really strong seasons. This team is 11-15 after a 2-10 and 10 start. They're a few games out of uh, fourth place in the West, uh, fifth, sixth place in the West. So I think this is a team that's trying to find some shooting, Cam Reddish, Evan Fournier, other players that I think that the Lakers will continue to take a look at. Oh, it's going to be all Lakers every day for a while. This is the mysterious one to me, and I'm really excited and and nervous to see where he goes. But Jay Crowder, is he moving anytime soon? So I don't know if anytime soon, but the Suns have continued to try to get a deal done. They want to move him. This is a team that clearly needs a trade, needs a jolt to their lineup. They're without basically two starters. Jay Crowder's out. Cam Johnson is out. And we'll see if he's going to be back sometime in January or February. I'm told recently the Suns did engage in some three-team conversations. It would have sent Crowder to Milwaukee. Milwaukee, uh, Atlanta, Miami are probably his three strongest suitors. And in that deal, it would have been four second-round picks and players to Houston, Eric Gordon, K.J. Martin to Phoenix, a deal that I think 
both Phoenix and Milwaukee would have done, but the holdup was Houston values both Eric Gordon and KJ Martin as first round picks. So the Suns are going to have to continue to be active in the marketplace to try to get a player that can help them in the front court for a guy like Jay Crowder. This is a team that clearly needs to, to add some depth if they're going to try to win a championship this year. That's crazy. The idea of helping the Bucks at all is, is insane to me. Okay, this is it. This is the... Uh... This is the creme de la creme of today. A lot, a lot of announcements were made concerning hardware. Shams, take it away. What do you have? So the NBA, they've been na- renaming their awards, right? We saw the Kobe Bryant All-Star Award. Uh, you have the Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, East and Western Conference MVP Awards. <laughs> like they're starting to do that, uh, you know, in full force. And now we have new MVP award names, uh, Defensive Player of the Year, R- Rookie of the Year, Sixth Man of the Year, Most Improved, and now a new Clutch Player of the Year award. So the major individual awards will now uh, have basically legend names attached to them. I- I'm just curious, Chandler's thought he was, you know, once upon a time uh, a-, a real contender for a lot of these awards. I'm- I'm w- I wonder what he thinks about this. <laughs> <Get you>. uh, <laughs> I, I think it's so ridiculous. Like this, this clutch player award. So you could have a horrendous year. You could average six points a game. You, you, AJ Griffin, for example, in the Hawks, is he right now the clutch player? Cause he has two game yes. winners. Like what, yes, what, is. what are the credentials? What are also who cares? Like it's you, you're, you're playing for a championship, like just making up all these ridiculous awards to me just seems like a stretch and such a reach. Um, I guess it gives players that don't really have a chance to, you know, win MVP or be on a good team to kind of compete for a championship. It, it kind of gives them some sort of goals, but I can, I can confidently say that players are not going to give a damn about winning this <laughs> award. Uh, they just won't. And so good. Maybe it gives them a bonus with their shoe deal or something. And maybe it gives them more bread, but this is, this is a joke to me. That's not bad. I would love to know where Dame Lillard keeps his uh, bubble MVP. Like, I, it's it's getting weird. <laughs> we we have the conference championship trophy, and then the conference championship MVP, and we, I, and now we're gonna have the Commissioner Cup sponsored by whoever in the middle of the season. And it's like, I'm sorry, like I'm like a traditionalist. I. I I like 82 games. I like that somebody wins the MVP. And then I like that there's a finals MVP, all this other stuff. I don't really need all this, the clutch player thing. Like who's voting on that? Like Sam is going to get a vote. Of course we should petition for us to get votes as media members mm-hmm. as well. And then just yeah. absolutely tank it for some reason, because <laughs> I don't, what do, what am I doing with my, <laughs> my clutch player award in my house? Like, are you giving that prominence? On, on the mantle, Chandler, yes. if you got that one, or is it just in a box somewhere? Like, I don't know what we do with that. I, I, don't, look- I don't think I would showcase it. I really don't. I don't think I would, you know, I, it doesn't make sense to me. Also, when I think of most improved player, no shade, but I don't really think of George Mikan either. As, How dare you? Know, you? The How name you? being attached. Yeah, it's just none of this really. Uh, what I about like MJ? The, yeah, you like I MJ? love that. I love yeah. that. Um, what awards are they going to make for like LeBron, Steph Curry? Stop. Like they're, they're, Just you're stop running it right there. Oh, gonna they're going to have they're going to have the best shooter this season award. It's going to be Steph. They're gonna, like <laughs> they're, they're just going to they're just oh, going to most dominant player LeBron James. No, <laughs> most passive aggressive. We'll put that one on there. See if that oh, one will work for you guys. Yeah. Uh, should, I got, I like, no, I do feel like that you are opening up this it's almost like the NBA front office likes that we all argue with each other over and over again with LeBron versus MJ. Cause knowing that they just did this, this is going to be the conversation starting all over again today. But I, I, the MJ thing, I don't mind, but you're right. We're adding too many awards. It feels like a pageant at this point, like best smile. And it just, I don't, I don't know. I'm with you guys. It's, it's I wish there was best trophies. smile. I'd have a chance to <laughs> win one of these. <laughs> Chandler Parsons, best smile. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Shams, love you. Thank you. We will, we will talk. Exactly. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Um, Oh God. Okay. Trophies. I can't wait to put my regional sports Emmy out here. Convince me time, Eddie. I have missed this the last few days. All right. Convince me that the top seed in the East and West should get to pick their opponent in each round of the playoffs. Not only should they get to pick, it should be on TV. (laughs) Like I would tune into that. I I think just like the all-star thing should be in person like i need to see that playground style like 
I like that. We want the calves. Boom. And then extra, extra motivation Ooh. for the calves. I actually think it's like it works functionally. I, I think it adds drama to the series. Um, and I think there should be a little bit of a reward for being the top seed in the conference more than just game seven on your court. Cause you might not even play game seven. Uh, I, I love it. Like, hey, yo, if we're just giving awards away, arbitrary awards with fancy names, let's do some stuff that actually affects the game. Uh, let's do this. I like this. I like this idea. Who, whoever came up with this one, we need you in the league office. How offended right? are you? If you're the team that gets picked. Yes. to play the first round? <laughs> It's the best. It's the right. best. I, I didn't that happen this year in the NFL where the Packers got to pick after they played in Europe. They picked the Jets and the Jets beat them because they were so angry. They were insulted. To me, this adds drama yeah. that you didn't even know you needed because you don't want to get picked, but you kind of want to get picked, right? Like yeah, imagine you're the eight off. seed Hornets and you just get smoked <laughs> anyway. So it's like, yo, you were upset, but you just got right. swept. Oh well. <laughs> but you know what? You tried harder. <laughs> That's what yeah. we're hoping. Uh, Chandler, I can't, I mean, we need 20 minutes for this next one. <clears throat> Convince me that NBA players should call their own fouls. <laughs> yeah, You know what? I like this. If they put a cap on the number of Ooh. fouls that they get, let's, let's okay. even say it's more than say it's 10. This would eliminate the Lucas of the world that are complaining every single time to the <laughs> ref. Um, this would eliminate pretty much any of the reviews and any of the delays in the games. This, this would be, I think, a good thing for the game with just the, the amount of just begging. And the, I'm so <laughs> tired of seeing players go like this after every single call. That wouldn't happen if you just get to call your own fouls. And But there's got to be a cap on it because this would get the games would be seven hours if there was Easy. never there was not a cap on this. But yeah, I think I think it would be a, a, a smart thing thing but there's there's got to be some sort of number where they just can't be going ham calling fouls every single play eddie laughed you like that one i know you like that one i, I want to see the defensive guys do it imagine marcus smart with his 10 <laughs> offensive fouls he gets to call a game for his flops so, you know imagine the guys he fouls out by calling those charges I, I think it's funny i think chandler's right if you do this maybe you give like one a game like a coach's challenge and just imagine like the one player who in crunch time, he waited all game and he calls his own foul because right. he's just that type of douche. Like, him. <laughs> or, or the opposite. If the game's on the line and I'm out of foul calls, you could just hack me because I already blew all my foul calls. So, uh, see, yeah, you can't cap it. I think for the sake of just a test, maybe we take one preseason game next season and we just try this out. Even if it goes seven hours. We just try it out. Cause I think eventually the players are going to be like, we don't want to play seven hour games. Let's figure this out. But I and don't then, know. Maybe, maybe they do. And then we should give an award to who calls the least <laughs> amount of fouls. I don't even know who to I name like that, that after, but yeah, I don't hate I like it. I don't hate it. Dennis Rodman award or something. Wow. Yeah. God, he's been waiting his whole life. Uh, Eddie <laughs> convince me that a handful of NBA games each season should be played in high school gyms or on outdoor courts and or. I love this. I love that hockey does this and they have their outdoor game. I know the NBA toy with it before, I think in Phoenix and maybe somewhere else. Um, obviously you don't want wind to be an issue in a, in a basketball game. <laughs> and, and there's almost no avoiding that in that sense. I think a smaller gym, a high school gym, that that's also fun. Do something in the drew, do something, you know, at Oak Hill, one of these historic high schools or, you know, Rucker park, which did had the TBT oh, this yeah. summer and, and has hosted many games, something like that. Uh, I, I love it. I do worry a little bit. We saw the Seattle program with Jamal Crawford this summer have its own issues, but with the league in charge and, and doing all of their legwork beforehand, I, I think it could happen. There's just something about, you know, in the summer when those guys are playing at like lifetime fitness, they just look <laughs> larger than life and they make the rim look shorter from those angles. Uh, let, let's put that on TV. I used to love the old Orlando summer league because it was that weird little funky gym and the funny camera angle. Uh, I would love this, uh, make it a prime time premiere matchup. People will complain, but fellas get on sure. the court the courts, 94 feet. Let's make it happen. Chandler, would you yeah. hate it? No, I yeah. love it. I love high school okay. games. Like Bronny played last night, the high school it's packed. It's fun. It, imagine, you know, NBA players going to these smaller gyms. I love it. Put them at Duke, put them at Rucker, put them at mm. these historic basketball courts. Uh, and it gives a different, a different demographic for fans. I, I love it. You know, they have the college games on a cruise ship. It's, we can just keep coming up with the craziest locations. And I think it'd be great. 
Oh, Drake has that mansion with the full size basketball court. We could do it go. there. There you go. That's could do there security there. All right. We've just had 97 great ideas in less than an hour. Brilliant. Up next, should the Lakers just blow up the whole damn thing and trade LeBron? Run it back. Returns next. Yes, it is time for a new game. Blow it up, build it up. These are all teams that are sort of hovering around that 500 mark, and we have to decide their fates. A lot of pressure on you guys, but here we go. How about the Raptors? We start with them. Currently one game under 500. However, they're sitting there ninth in the East. They could make Siakam Barnes and Anobi available. Van Vliet has a player option for the following season that he'll probably opt out of. Chandler, should the Raptors blow it up or build it up? Uh, no, I don't think so. I and mean, look, they were 15 and 17 last year before New Year's and, and ended up being the five seed. And uh, they have so much young talent. They have an all NBA player in, o, in, uh, in Siakam. OG's playing his best basketball. I think the biggest disappointment so far has been Scotty Barnes, just because, you know, when, when you're rookie of the year, you expect guys to take that step. And, and he's just been kind of struggling a little bit. Uh, Nick Nurse, to me, is a top five coach in the league. Uh, I don't think they panic. I think, uh, you know, I think they continue to build this group. They're one of those teams that have about five to seven guys from 6'7 to 6'10 that are long, athletic, can shoot the ball. They defend. They switch pick and rolls. Um, I love the Raptors. I, I, I think they can actually make noise in the playoffs with uh, with this current roster. So I, I don't think they should blow it up at all. And I think they're going to be just fine. So they should build it yeah, up. Yeah, you're really killing my game here, Chandler. Build it up, build it up, build it up. <laughs> I, I would love for them to blow it up so maybe, you know, OG and <laughs> Anobi can be a net or something like that. But wow. uh, they, they, look, under Masai, under Nick Nurse, they're going to be patient. They know what they have. They know what they're building. They have a nice mix of really young guys just scratching the surface and some vets who are there for the title year. Uh, they're going to, they're going to build it up and they're going to take their time with it as well. They have Scotty Barnes, the reigning rookie of the year, who uh, for all my complaints about his game, you, you can see what they, what they see in him going forward. He, he can be a Giannis type player as he goes on. When you see him in person and realize just how big he is handling the ball like that and how strong he is, you kind of get what they're going for. And they chased Giannis that year where he was almost a, a free agent. So, you know, that's kind of the recipe that Masai has in mind. But, yeah, th they're going to build this up. They're going to take their time. I think, you know, people on the fringes like Gary Trent may be available as they, they look forward to next year and beyond. And maybe Fred Van Vliet with that player option and, mm. and with his uncertain future. But the, you know, the foundation of that team, Pascal and, and, and Scotty Barnes, they're there to stay. OG, I guess, is a dark horse with his contract situation, but they're, they're going to hold on to all those guys for as long as they can. I love that the game within the game is going to be Eddie shopping for the Nets within this game right mm -hmm. here. So here we go. <laughs> Heat currently 13 and 15. They're 10th in the East. Obviously, if they decide to blow it up, splashy pieces would be a Jimmy Butler, a Kyle Lowry. Eddie, blow it up or build it up. Is Kyle Lowry a splashy piece? I mean, not <laughs> like, anymore, but it's like yeah, for, if you like, barely watch, you think yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, there's probably a couple GMs who barely watch, so they might be able to pull them. But I, I, I would, I would blow this up. Uh, much like the Raptors, they have probably the best coach in the league, and they have a strong foundation there with their front office and their ownership. Where look, they want to win, and they know how to build a winner. They've done it with mega stars. They've done it with homegrown talents, and just added all the nice cherry on top at the end. They want to win. They have players they believe in. They have foundational pieces. But they also have very tradable players. They've been trying to trade Duncan Robinson for since he signed his contract. <laughs> Tyler yep. Hero's name has been mentioned. Kyle Lowry's name has been mentioned. And on and on and on. Um, I, I think this is a good opportunity for them to blow it up, cash in on those guys while they can, and move forward from there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think they should blow it up, but I don't, uh, it's confusing. I don't think they should build it up either. Like they definitely need to do something. <laughs> I, I, I like their, I like their team. I love hero. I love bam. I love Jimmy. Like Eddie just said, I think the dream scenario, they move Lowry. I think he's kind of on a steady decline. Duncan Robinson, uh, you know, he got that big deal and really was out of the rotation for a long time. Um, they have too much talent for me to blow it up fully, but they, they ideally would love to to move one of those pieces we just talked about. But when you have that core going forward, that, that coach and Spo, that, that DNA, uh, the heat are one of those teams where like, I don't care how bad they struggle this year. I don't want to see them in the playoffs. 
Um, I love Max Struess. They have these other guys that can kind of fill in too. Uh, I think they're going to be fine. I just think they need to do, they need to make a move, but not fully blow it up. So, uh, so a half, like a renovate. We'll just renovate yeah. from the inside. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, the Chicago Bulls right now, 11 and 15th, sitting 11th in the East. Obviously, some names, Jabbar DeRozan, Zach Levine, Vucevic. Um, those would probably be guys, if we're talking about blowing it up, Chandler. So should they blow it up or build it up? They should blow it up. They should have blown it up last week. Uh, they're going to lose <laughs> Vooch uh, this summer. DeMar is playing at such a high level that if you wait too long, you could lose him for nothing in 2024 when he's a free agent or wait and this, you know, eventually his trade value goes down. Um, I don't know when Lonzo Ball is going to ever play again. And, and normally a coach wouldn't be into tanking, but they just gave Billy D the security. They gave him this extension, even though there was rumors with him and Levine having beef. Um, it, I think you blow it up because also if you don't and you make the playoffs, the, the Orlando magic, get your, your pick the, the top four, uh, p- protected mm. pick. So you might as well, if you're the bulls blow it up right now, try to start losing as many games as possible, get into that one, two, three or four pick area. Cause if not Orlando sitting there pretty getting their pick and they're going to lose these guys in free agency for nothing. Yeah, I'm with Chandler. They have a real opportunity with Booch and, and his expiring contract. And if they really want to go for it, DeMar DeRozan is, a, is is an attractive name for a lot of teams. He, he was when they signed him. And, it, you know, Zach Levine, I don't know if he's straight eligible this season, but, man, they're looking at that contract and him recovering from this knee injury and wondering what happened there. Uh, the Lonzo Ball situation Chandler mentioned is tough. He should be coming back within the next month or so, but who knows at this point? They're on the outside looking in for sure. That pick is the is the biggest problem they have. If they're going to blow it up, they got to blow it all the way up because they don't want to have the sixth pick and then do all this for nothing but some right. cap space and a couple of rotation players. But yeah, I think they should. I just don't think they're going to. They just re-signed their coach. They know that, right. that pick is protected. They're waiting on guys to recover fully from injury. I think they're going to wait it out, and, and I think it's a mistake. And this yeah, is this one of those teams that we, we, beginning of the season, we thought maybe with this roster, they could be kind of in the hunt after this many games. And they're sitting at the 11 seed. They're struggling. Levine on this big contract has not been himself. He, like I said, he's beefing with Billy D and they kind of just made their decision. It seemed like with extending Billy D. Uh, I think this is a situation where they need to blow it up. Now they have very good trade assets and there's no reason in and w- waiting and, and and winning more games and losing that pick to Orlando. So I, I think this is the prime team to absolutely blow it up. What about Minnesota? One game under 500, 11th in the West. Oh, good. I'm glad Eddie likes that. Now I'm going to go to you. Uh, should they just consider blowing this whole thing up or continue to build it up, Eddie? <laughs> did, did they blow it up this summer with this <laughs> trade that might be one of the worst trades of all time like uh, they completely ruined the trade market for most of the league with this with this ridiculous trade that felt ridiculous in the moment and it is even worse now um they can't afford to blow it up they, they've bought in for the long term they've given away four first round picks they, they don't have any choice uh i do think there are moves that can happen on the fringes if they want to try to get rid of D'Lo, who has not played up to par and, and on and on. But, yeah, I mean, they have to build it up. they got to wait for Cat. they got to try to push their way back into playoff contention. They don't have any choice. Yeah, this is they, – they can't blow it. By blowing it up, you're admitting that this is the worst trade ever for Rudy, and you're admitting that you're wrong already after 25 games or whatever it's been. But, yeah, I like them maybe trying to move D'Lo. They, they need a vet point guard. They need, a, they need a Mike Conley in the trade market. They need someone like that to kind of glue this team together because they do have the talent. They can, I imagine they could get a lot for Towns, but – in my eyes, you're not trading Gobert because you get about half is what you just gave up for if you did that now. You're not trading Anthony Edwards, literally, unless it's for Luca or Giannis or someone like that. Um, so the I don't think there's moves here to make um, unless it's like a D-Lo or, or someone like that, which... I don't know. I don't know how to help the situation, but you, you can't you can't blow it up quite yet after making that monumental trade. I mean, sometimes you just have to admit you screwed up really, yeah. really, really badly. Uh, the <laughs> Lakers. Look, I know that the vibes in Lakerville have, have changed a bit, right? 
but they are still 11 and 15. They are still 12th in the West. So I ask you, should they consider trading an Anthony Davis, a LeBron James Chandler, or do you build it up? I think you build it up at this point. I think you try and get rid of Russ, and I think you do add, like, Bogdanovich, these rumors, man, I'd be salivating if I was them because that is exactly what they need. I don't think they blow it up and get rid of AD or LeBron. Uh, AD has proved now that he's a top five, top ten player in this league still. Um, but they need shooters. They, they need pieces. They, they, they need they need Bogdanoviches. Either one, by the way. When I saw Bogdanovich, I didn't care which <laughs> one because – that's exactly who they need. Um, and, and they found a little something here. When you have those guys and they're healthy and they're playing, do I think this team's a contender? No, I, I don't at all. But when you add some shooters around AD and LeBron that both their last time out, you know, dominated the game, I, I think you just hold on to it. You're not going to get much. And, and I tr- think you try and just, you know, what we said early on, just add shooters around this. But Bagdanovich is having a year. He, I can't help but think how good he would be for them. Uh, I say you blow it up. There's I've been on the trade machine all morning. There's a couple of Anthony Davis to Nets trades that work. I don't want to say who <laughs> and what names, but they work. Uh, blow it up. I, it was kind of shocking that everybody was so high on the Lakers, and then I go look at the standings, and they're 11 and 15. They're Thank the you. 12 seeds, too. I kind of blew my mind, but, you know, six of four, six of their last four, self game against Celtics tonight. I think the Celtics lost. Let's just see what see what you can get for AD from Brooklyn. I, I think there's some good options there. Are you just willing to move Brooklyn? to L.A.? Cause I feel like that's piece is going to be Kevin Durant. <laughs> like, are you going to, are you going West or <laughs> I, I am, I'm definitely willing to move to LA, but in this scenario, right. I think, I think the trade is a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. That would be, a, that would blow up everything. All right. We're taking a quick break. If you listen to our subliminal message yesterday, you probably did all right. But if you listen to Chandler, you lost. <laughs> it's parlay time. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back. Hmm. Well, We like to hold ourselves accountable here at Run It Back. So let's take a look at yesterday. Eddie, many, many flowers to you. Do you want to speak to your teammate now about what he did yesterday? I I mean, some of us did our job and and, uh, (laughs) he's a man of many means. I think he owes me, what was it, $230? (laughs) Send you my cash app, bro. God forbid I God forbid I take the best team in the NBA to go and play against the Clippers who finally play. Of course, why wouldn't they play up their potential when I when I take Celtics against them? And then Reggie Jackson, he's got the quickest seven points in the history of the NBA and then finishes with seven points in 26 minutes. You can't make this shit up. That's when I knew I was like, Chandler has a special, special gift. We don't know what it's called yet, but it is special. But the beauty if, is, if you, if you saw the Thunder saw cover, it. it was the most intense thirty seconds of oh, ten point basketball I ever I saw. I slipped back life. and forth, just waiting to crush you for that, and the court, and <laughs> it just couldn't catch they a break. They trapped so. at half court and stole the ball from Luca to cut it to seven, <laughs> and I jumped out of my seat like I won a title. I, gambling's amazing. Like this is it's crazy. <laughs> don't well, do you guys it, are trying please. to help people. Yeah, like to do it, but don't do it like Chandler. Okay, so. The beauty is Chandler. Time to redeem yourself. Uh, think about it for a second, Eddie. Your two legs are <laughs> all right. Jalen Green over twenty one uh, points against the Suns. He had thirty last Ooh. time he played them. I'm right. I'm going with the young fella. And then I have what's the second one? Oh, Warriors with the, the points one. versus the Bucks. Uh, yeah, let uh, let's get the Warriors their first big road win. I'm, I'm all for it. They are due. They are due, Chandler. How about you? <laughs> Here we go. Okay, first one, <laughs> Pelicans. They're hot. They got the they got the player of the week in Zion. Jazz. I think they blew their wad. I think they're done. The, come on, like there's nothing left to do besides the Pelicans to win by two points tonight. Okay, okay. Feel and I'm doubling down on the Celtics. I just they, you cannot come to LA. I do understand that they're on this long back end of a, of a road trip, but they, they, come on, it's the Lakers. They're struggling, and you lost last night. You didn't even none of their guys played too many minutes because this was blowout. I think the Celtics make up for my bad L last night. I mean, there it is. Twenty bucks will get you two thirty-eight. I will say this, Chandler. Unlike yesterday, when I knew you were going to be wrong. These feel a little better, so when they don't hit, it's gonna it's gonna hurt, guys. It's gonna hurt. Well, you knew Fingers I was gonna crossed. be wrong yesterday. I knew it. I felt it, and <laughs> I should have had it. it. Uh, everybody, enjoy the games tonight. We will be back tomorrow. We have been run it back, and best of luck to you all. <laughs>